all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where i'll bring you back to back update and information as see the hot in case you have not joined our social media handle what are you waiting for kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our uh, news drop you will be the first we'll collect them let's go down to the news proper as the hot you don't shall it. Uh, for the Obodo as it be, uh, I say um, condolences to the family of Ifan Oba and condolences to the family of um, family of uh, Emmanuel Iwanyango. These two days, uh, Ndibo has lost two great sons, uh, even though that we are meant to count these our sons on how they have benefited us. As individual and as a people, they have represented uh, in different areas. But as it is, um, for now, we go say RIP to their family because uh, that is not what you can mock someone with. As it be, uh, information dropping from my table say that uh, Mazi Ifan Obad don't die uh, for in London Hotel, uh, where in go Chilo there for London, uh, there in losing life. Uh, but still, it's up until now, the reason for his death has not been known. Uh, he was not anytime sick. Uh, but what changed his situation is what we are yet to understand. Uh, how a full grown man like that, with full of strength and vigor, just lost his life. Remember that Ifan Oba is 53 and will be about 54 on the September of this year. But as it is, uh, and as it has happened, life has been lost. And we say, rest in peace, Mazi Fanyuba. Rest in peace, Mazi Iwanyangu. And that brings me to um, a lot of people that have kicked against um, the release of um, Mazi and the Kano and people who have also tried to jeopardize. Uh, I'm saying, my. Imanandiban is new chonya de anjo. Is it that um, the cause of the prophet? Uh, is trying to affect the big big people that have stood on the gap uh, that he will not be released from the DSS detention. Remember that a lot of time uh, people like um, Ifan Yoba has counted against whatever that concerns the indigenous people of Biafra and um, okay even though recently there was a time uh, that it was reported it's because of um, this issue of uh, election coming up, he even visited later on. He visited Mazen and the Kano, uh, with Mazen and the Kano's wife, as he did be. Uh, but be that as it may, I'll still come back to that case. Uh, but let me take you to what is happening currently now. Uh, Nigerians and the government are saying to Nigeria, they say, Don't copy Kenyans, hunger protests may have unintended consequences in Nigeria. <laughs> Uh, now the government, government, now in the one people say, hmm, the upcoming protest. Remember that there is this protest that will be coming up on the 1st of August. Uh, the citizens of Nigeria said they are hungry. Uh, you could imagine, you know, how dilapidated the structure of the NIG government is that the citizens all over the nation wants to protest, cry out and say that hunger is about killing them. And um, believe me, this hunger that is being suffered in this nation is as a result of greediness of few politicians uh, who want to siphon the nation's money into their personal pocket. Who is leading the present protest? We are yet to know. Meanwhile, let's go down to the full details of the information. Few days to the planned nationwide hunger protest in the country. Nigerians have been warned against copying the recent protests in Kenya as it could have unintended and detrimental consequences. Ambassador Ibrahim Tadujin Shola issued the warning in a statement in Lorraine, the Kwara state capital, on Sunday. While asserting that the Kenyans' protests highlighted the potential power of public dissent, he argued that rather than follow a disruptive path, Nigerians should focus on constructive engagement, support for ongoing reforms, and holding local governments accountable. By working collaboratively with the framework of democratic processes, 
we can address our challenges more effectively and build more stable and prosperous future, he stated. According to Ibrahim, in recent weeks call for protests against the administration of President Muhammad uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu have surged across Nigeria. Why dissent and public demonstration are integral to a healthy democracy, the current wave of calls for protests appears to be premature and counterproductive given the administration's significant effort to address our nation's economic woes. President Tinubu's administration has undertaken a series of ambitious economic reform designed to tackle Nigeria's long-standing challenges, including rampant unemployment and economic instability. He explained that initiatives, though met with some immediate hurdles, aim to stabilize the nation's economy and create sustainable job opportunities for millions of Nigerians. However, the scope of these reforms, ranging from regulatory changes to investment in infrastructure, requires time to manifest tangible results. Yet, rather than supporting these crucial reforms, recent calls for protests risk undermining the very foundation upon which this economic rec recovery is being built. Ambassador Ibrahim advanced reasons why the Kenyan experience should not be allowed in Nigeria, saying the demonstration marked by thousands stormed the Kenyan parliament part of the building being set on fire underscore a critical point. Why protests can be a powerful form of dissent. Copying this approach in Nigeria could look to adverse consequences and fail to address our, our unique challenges effectively. The protests in Kenya, sparked by the Finance Bill 2024, highlighted significant public unrest over proposed tax increases. On June 25, 2024, thousands of protesters stormed the Kenyan Parliament building, building in Nairobi, driven by outrage over the bill's proposed hard ties. The situation escalated with some protesters setting parts of the building on fire leading to a considerable property damage and further unrest. While the intensity of the protests captured global attention, they also illustrate several risks and challenges that Nigeria should carefully consider before adopting similar tactics. Nigeria has avenues for constructive engagement that could lead to more effective solutions. Engaging in dialogue with policymakers, participating in public consultation, and using democratic protests to address grievances are more productive ways to influence policy without causing widespread destruction, he added. And my people, I don't see as that one, they happen. Uh, this warning is coming from Tandujin, uh, ambassador, uh, on addressing the issue of the upcoming protests. Of course, um, a lot of Nigerians say that the government is not doing it well this time, and they felt that the best way uh, to let the government know their grievances is to protest and let the people see what is happening. As it is, mass resignation looms a military over revised condition of service. Officers who enlisted into the armed forces after university education face a looming mass sensor doors following the proposed revised harmonized term and condition of service. 2024 awaiting presidential approval. The document, according to agreed officers, if approved by the president, will frustrate them out of service with long stay on ranks. The document cited by leadership indicates that the military authorities are contemplating a policy change that will increase the duration required for promotion for direct short service. Officers who join as professionals while leaving the promotion timeline unchanged for regular service officers commission through the Nigerian Defense Academy. Why junior regular service officers spend five years on a rank, short service officers spend seven years before being promoted. Chapter 17 of the proposed revised HTAOACOS states that substantive promotions, promotions up to the rank of Major slash Lieutenant Kadek uh, squad leader shall be by time among conditions. This time requirements include a Kadek to Lieutenant Colonel to 
to STLT to FG officer commission to this rank shall be automatic after five years from the date of commencement of cadet training except on dissimilar grounds. Um, as soon as they see, um, uh, this one is coming from the NIG army. Um, another thing, another information we say, uh, if you like say army say they want follow for the protest, so uh, because. Uh, say the things will be say the government they pay them say you know they reach them well well again and upon that uh, they say they want uh, join the protest on another information a uh, nigerian army don't invade emo community reportedly gone down civilians and they have destroyed the property oh say taylor i thought that some of these things have stopped in emo state uh, i don't know the work of the governor I mean, why the governor should be there and some of these things are happening without interfering or settling the matter beforehand. Eyewitnesses reported that at least 13 civilians, including men, women and children, were sent to judgment in the attack. Seven severe Nigerian Nigeria Army operations in our Mama community, Imo State, have left some residents reportedly killed and others injured. The footage of the incident seen by Sahara reporters showed soldiers arriving in five heavily armored vehicles employing explosive devices on resident homes. Eyewitnesses reported that at least 13 civilians, including men, women and children, were sent to judgment on the attack. Many others sustained injury or were forced to flee. Properties worth billions of naira were also destroyed. Uh, this one is happening in Imo State, Awo Omama. Meanwhile, the army said its troop of the Joint Task Force Southeast Operation Udoka, in collaboration with other security agencies, raided and cleared indigenous people of Biafra IPOB and East Arm affiliate, the ESN Security Network Camp on July 28, 2024, as part of the ongoing operation to deter the activities of the region. The raid took place in Ezioha, Eziama village and Mbito local government area of Imo State joined troops from the Nigerian Army, Navy, Air Force, Police Department of the State Service and the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps targeted the ESN camp at Lucio Ago, also known as B-44. According to the statement, during the firefight, troops need to rise to IPOV ESN commanders known as Asari and Maze, why others fled with different degree of consort. On this part, uh, now at the army them boys, and uh, then they report this one, saying how you take go for that particular operation, or say where they go, uh, they say that the, now say that the men of the IPOB and PSN, and then they, they fight. Who knows the truth? Who don't know the truth? Meanwhile, this is where I'll be winding down the curtain down. And if this is your first time of joining us on this wonderful channel, kindly go ahead and subscribe, like, comment, and share. Thank you for listening. God bless you.